10 unsolved mysteries in chemistry. How did life begin? Researchers have speculated about minerals such as clay acting as catalysts for the formation of the first self-replicating polymers. Researchers have shown, for example, that certain simple chemicals can spontaneously react to form more complex building blocks of life, such as amino acids and nucleotides, the basic units of DNA and RNA. Through such steps, scientists may progressively bridge the gap from inanimate matter of self-replicating, self-sustaining systems. All you need, it seems, is a molecular system that can serve as a template for making a copy that then detach itself. Researchers have focused on the ability of some RNA strands to act as enzymes providing evidence in support of the DNA world hypothesis. How do molecules form? In the 1920s, physicists Walter Heitler and Fritz London showed how to describe a chemical bond using the equations of quantum theory. American chemist Linus Pauling proposed that bonds form when the electron orbitals of different atoms overlap in space. A competing theory by Robert Mulliken and Frederick Hund suggested that bonds are the result of atomic orbitals merging into molecular orbitals that extend over more than one atom. In reality, a molecule is a bunch of atomic nuclei in a cloud of electrons with opposing electrostatic forces fighting a constant tug-of-war with one another. How does the environment influence our genes? The cells of the early embryo can develop into any tissue type. As the embryo grows, these so-called pleural potent stem cells differentiate acquiring specific roles that remain fixed in their progeny. Genes that get switched off retain a latent ability to work to give rise to the proteins they encode and can be reactivated, for instance, by exposure to certain chemicals taken in from the environment. People can have a genetic predisposition to many diseases, including cancer, but whether or not the disease manifests itself will often depend on the environmental factors operating through these epigenetic pathways. How does the brain think and form memories? The brain is a chemical computer. Interactions between neurons are moderated by molecules, specifically neurotransmitters that pass across the synapses. The synapses are contact points where one neural cell wires up to another. The mechanism of declarative memories, memories of people, places, and things, involves the activation of a protein named NMDA. Our everyday declarative memories are often encoded through a process called long-term potentation, which involves NMDA receptors and is accompanied by an enlargement of the neuronal region that it forms a synapse. As the synapse grows, so does the strength of its connection with neighbors. The strength meaning the voltage induced at the synaptic junction by arriving nerve impulses. How many elements exist? Using particle accelerators to crash atomic nuclei together, scientists can create new super-heavy elements which have more protons and neutrons in their nuclei than do the 92 or so elements found in nature. Because nuclei are thought to be stabilized by particular magic numbers of protons and neutrons, some researchers hope to find what they call the ion of stability, a region a little beyond the current capabilities of element synthesis in which super-heavies live longer. Some scientists think that 137 is the stopping point of atomic mass. Some say that there's no definite answer without further experimentation. Can computers be made out of carbon? Computer chips made out of graphene, a web of carbon atoms, could potentially be faster and more powerful than silicon-based ones. Carbon nanotubes promised applications ranging from high-strength carbon composites to tiny wires and electronic devices. How do we tap more solar energy? The easiest way to make fuel from solar energy is to split water to produce hydrogen and oxygen gas. A gallon of water would provide enough fuel to power a home in developing countries for a day. Whereas plants continually produce no, new proteins to replace broken ones, artificial leaves do not yet have the full chemical synthesis machinery of a living cell at their disposal. What is the best way to make biofuels? We let plants store the sun's energy for us and then turn plant matter into fuels. Even though there is a surplus in agriculture and forest residue, converting low-grade biomass into fuel requires breaking down hardy molecules such as lignin and cellulose, and conversion will need to work mostly with solid biomass. And we devise new ways to create drugs. Thousands of new molecules are made by a randomly assembled building blocks and then screened to select those that do a good job. Researchers can encode potential protein-based drugs and molecules in DNA and then use error-prone replications to generate new variants of the successful ones. Proteins, for example, have precise sequence of amino acids because at the sequence it spells out by the genes that encode the proteins. Researchers tag the building blocks with short DNA strands that program the linker structure. 
They also create a new molecule that walks along the DNA, reading its code and sequentially attaching small molecules to the building blocks to make the linker a process analogous to protein synthesis in cells. Can we continuously monitor our own chemistry? Chemical sensing could have countless applications to detect contaminants in food and water at very low concentrations. Detecting these chemicals can make prognosis better. Rapid genomic profiling would enable drugs to be tailored to individuals, reducing risks of side effects and other liabilities. Some chemists predict continuous monitoring of all matters of health and disease, like providing real-time information to surgeons during operations. <laughs>